I wrote an example of a few promises here and I want to walk through them so that God will grant us grace tonight. Genesis chapter 12 from verse 2 and 3. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. Yes, we look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever, Yahweh, Yahweh. Now, watch this. Believers, you know, I have told you that without the word of God proceeding from him, the power of God has no ministry. The power of God is only activated when the word goes. If the word is not released, the power of God remains inert. There is no ministry whatsoever. The, the assignment of the anointing is to validate the speakings of God. So if the word of God has not gone forth, the anointing does not have an assignment. This is to Abraham, and I will make of thee a great nation. Say promises. And I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing i love verse 3 it says and i will bless them that bless thee and curse him that cursed thee and in thee koinonia shall all the families of the earth be blessed exceeding great and precious promises as at the time he was telling this man called abraham he called him out of awe of the chaldeans and was going to lead him to a place of destiny and he gave him exceeding great and precious promises let's look at a few more genesis 17 6 as i list them and as you write and as we you know quote some of them i want you to internalize it these are a representation of God's commitment to your life this is how far he can go as far as your life is concerned and I will make Joshua Selman exceeding fruitful and I will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee this is is listen listen I hope you know that these are not just scriptural renditions for you it can be a verse that was written by Zondava or white taker house but the bible calls them exceeding great and precious promises that until these promises find expression in your life we will be in doubt as to whether you are a partaker of the divine nature and i will make thee exceeding fruitful and i will make nations of thee so don't ask how a man becomes a nation there is a promise that sponsors that possibility how do ordinary men command influence across nations they, they stand upon the promise there is a promise that sponsors every possibility you see i will make you exceeding fruitful and i will make nations of thee it didn't say and i will bring kings to you alone kings will come out of you when kings come out of you then what is your own name are we together don't be distracted exceeding great and precious promises in no particular order jeremiah 33 and verse 6 god is waking someone up and saying you have been walking in defeat as if i didn't say anything you have not brought the words that have spoken back to me behold i will bring health and cure he says i will cure them and i will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth exceeding great and precious promises you can stand in faith and declare. No, it is not sickness that will take me to the grave. I reject it because I am standing on a promise. Listen, please learn this because the days that we live in, many arrogant people will argue this away to their detriment. I will bring you health and cure. I will reveal to you the abundance of peace and truth. That means being healthy is not enough. If you don't have peace, you are still sick. Are we together now? I will not only give you health, the covenant of peace, nothing missing, nothing broken. Jeremiah 29, 11, I don't know who this is for. It says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, they are thoughts of peace. 
this is not a general statement it's up to you to receive it as these words come these are the exceeding great and precious promises thoughts of peace and not of evil god is not thinking evil of me no god is not thinking evil of me his thoughts towards me guarantees that there must be an expected end are we still together job chapter 5 from verse 19 to 23 exceeding great and precious promises you must know what these promises are before you know how to engage them he shall deliver thee in six troubles yea in in seven there shall no evil touch you do you believe that yeah. verse 19 or verse 20 now in famine are we are we right on that in famine he shall redeem thee from death and in war from the power of the sword no devil will take my life through the sword because i am standing upon an exceeding great and precious promise it looks like it's too good to be true till you believe it god is only committed to what you believe not just what he said in famine he shall redeem thee from death and in war from the power of the sword reading to 23 Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. Neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. 22. At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh. Neither shalt thou be afraid of the beast of the earth. Why? For thou shalt be in covenant with the stones of the field. And the beast of the field shall be at peace with you. So, listen. Don't ask Daniel why the lions did not eat him up. He says there is a covenant that ensures your environment should not hurt you. Not the sun that smites you by day, nor the moon by night. There is a covenant with the elements of creation. They have been mandated to support what I represent. That if I enter any city at my arrival, the elements is an echo from the spirit to F the sun, the moon, men, the seas that they stand in partnership with the things that I represent. If you do not believe this, the sun can smite you. That means if anybody uses the sun against me, you are wasting your time. The covenant came before your arrival. You shall be at peace with the leagues. The stones of the field, there was an instruction that was given to them. So you can enter a city and someone who is supposed to bless you is made to return back from his journey because you came. There is something speaking. Mm. Exceeding great and precious promises. Listen, these are the truths, ladies and gentlemen, that makes other people look like they, their lives are a plethora of coincidences. They are not mistakes. These realities are programmed through knowledge. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Is the Lord. So if it is happening to someone and not you, it's because you are not standing on that scripture. Exceeding great and precious promises. Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 1 and 2. We are considering exceeding great and precious promises that God placed a covenant and swore upon this. Finding no man greater than him, he swore that by these two immutable things, it is impossible for God to lie. 
But now saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you, I like this one, by thy name. I didn't call you as a crowd. I called you by name. Thou art mine. Reading to three. It says, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with you. I told you that there are times that the storm will not even come close to you. But there are times that in the midst of the storm, verify who is in your boat. If Jonah is in your boat, start praying quickly because you are about to die. But if Jesus is in your boat, find peace. They shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon you. Verse 3. The Bible says, For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom. Look up, please. Have you seen a kidnapper catch someone? You, you know the kind of amount they mention? God said, I took Egypt and gave it as a ransom for you. Even Ethiopia and Sheba. This is how much he places value on you. Do you believe this? Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. I'm showing you exceeding great and precious promises. This book of the law, he says, shall not depart from out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein for then shall thou make thy way prosperous and thou shall have good success a man can have good success if you are standing on this exceeding great and precious promises are we still together isaiah 49 and verse 16 god is speaking to someone here wherefore we have been given this exceeding great and precious promises read with me 49 16 behold i have graven thee upon the palm of my hands thy words are continually before me can you see this this is an expression of how determined god is do you know what it means to be at the palm of his hands he says, all that you have given me, I have kept, John 17. And none is lost except the son of perdition. But I know whom I believe, he says, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him, even against that day. Psalm 91. Let's start from verse 3. Then we'll go to 5 to 8. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, from the noisome pestilence. Verse 5. It says, Then thou shalt thou shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth by day. Reading to 8. Nor for the destruction that wasted in noonday. Uh-huh. A thousand shall fall by thy side and ten thousand by thy right side but it shall not come nigh thee verse 8 it says only with your eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked jump to verse 12 please verse 10 now jump to verse 10 it says there shall no evil befall thee neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling 11 for he shall give his angels hold on i hope you know even satan before jesus testified that this scripture is true at the temptation of jesus satan quoted it that god said he shall keep he was aware that when his angels are kept not even him can do anything he shall put his angels charge over thee to keep you in all your ways verse 12 they shall bear thee up on their hands, lest thou dash your feet against a stone. Go to verse 15. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. 16. With long life. I like this one. With long life. With long life. 
will I satisfy him and show him my salvation believers please hear me don't just jump and get excited for nothing while it's good to rejoice I want you to see the extent of God's commitment to you that he has covenanted with himself these are the exceeding great and precious promises that by them ye might be the partakers of his divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust can we continue Job 22 and verse 29. Job 22 and verse 29. God is damaging ignorance from someone's mind. You must be aware of that which has been written concerning you. When men are cast down, it says, Then shall thou say, There is lifting up, and he shall save the humble person. There is no going down for me in the name of Jesus Christ. There is no going down for me. The Bible says when men are cast down for you, it shall be that there is a lifting up. First John chapter 5, 14 and 15. First John 5, 14 and 15. Is God speaking to someone? First John 5, 14. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything, not according to our tears, not according to the vastness of our troubles, if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. 15. And if it is true that he heareth us, then whatsoever we ask, we know that we have our petitions that we have desired of him. Listen, when you are full of light and knowledge, let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, there is a way that you conduct yourself and there is a way that you speak. Let me show you a scripture that blessed me so powerfully. Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 20. Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 20 it says to the law and to the testimony if they speak not according to this word it is because there is no light in them there is a way that a believer speaks when the light and the power of God comes upon you are we together now you will never hear me say some things about my life not me no way my destiny is too expensive for the risk of ill communication. No. Most of us have destroyed our destinies because we do not know this exceeding great and precious promises. And you see, it is from the abundance of that which is locked up from within your heart that the mouth speaks most of us what comes out of our mouth is pungency and destruction over our own lives and others no wonder our lives continue to recycle pain and defeat it matters your communication that your speakings must be full of power and life it says do not say before an angel i made a mistake you must learn to speak my wife, this one that there is nothing now, what are the children going to eat? We are just miserable people. No, 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 no. I may not see wind. I may not see rain. But in the name of Jesus, I know that the valley shall be filled with water. See, our fathers who gave us this baton, this is how they lived. And most of us have not come to half their results. And yet we have the audacity to edit and argue with so many things. I was watching, it was Kenneth Copeland now in his 80s. And this man standing strong, speaking, flying himself. There are some things you can't pretend for long. If you are lying, it will show eventually. Are we together? Yes. The Bible says to follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. Exceeding great and precious promises. Now, 
The Bible says in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16, it says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Believers, please listen. In all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, and singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. I learned this as a spiritual principle. Your dominion in this kingdom is predicated upon your sound knowledge of the promises of God. Most of us cannot quote three or four or even show even five scriptures that support your confidence to stand in this life. I'm not into this ministry thing. Me, I'm just an average person. The devil does not care. When he comes, he bulldozes anything that does not carry the word. Hallelujah. The average believer, you can listen to the average believer and know that this person is not a student of scripture. There is a way believers who are immersed in the word, it, it must implicate you. There is a way you speak. Do not say it does not matter. It is the path to excellence. Wherefore, we have been given these great and exceeding precious promises. Many of us right now, we come to church and we just hear and nod and say, Amen, thank you, praise God. Wow, nice sermon. And you go back. When challenges come before you, all that you, you, re, you respond back to the challenge with is sympathy, wise sayings, and cultural admonishments. Unfortunately, none of these three has the power to drive Satan. When the devil comes, he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Satan does not come for counseling. He does not come for discussion. He does not come for negotiation. When he arrives, he's to kill, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The moment Satan came to Jesus, Jesus would have said, Satan, sit down. I created you. Let's discuss this issue. Why are you like this? Was that what he did? It is written but I know what is written that's why I can use it against you it is written and Satan too said it is written I'm not in ignorance I know some things too you must be full of the word this year you must be listen you must be full of the word this year I'm not just talking of this church thing we do and then you go out and speak as if you are an idol worshiper you must be you must be sound in scripture you wake up in the morning this is the day the lord has made i bless the lord for this day i decree and declare i speak and i command my morning it shall be unto me as god said it would be don't let people tell you leave this thing let's talk we are nigerians we know what is happening you keep speaking like that the person who is leading you into derision has somebody who is covering him in prayer. And you may be standing and it will first destroy you before you learn your lesson. I choose to reorder my life, to guide my life with precision. I, I remain a student of scripture, exploring like an archaeologist the mysteries of the kingdom. I want to know the promises of God. There are times that you go online and just download scriptures. What are the promises of God concerning your life, your health, your longevity? Bring them together. You don't need to know everything at once, but have, a re have representations across every area of your life and meditate upon it. It says meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly to them that your profiting may appear unto all. Why are things not working in my life? Every door closed. The person who promised to help me has now changed his mind. Instead of calling the person and saying, I will never let you go. Apostle said, knock. That's not the way to knock. You knock that way, it will never open. They will seal it even again because of that attitude. It's a spiritual experience. You go back. What are the forces that control favor? Why is this person not attending to me? And you begin to program life right from your room, right from your house. As you step out, you are stepping into an atmosphere that has been programmed already. You arrive somewhere and someone calls you and says, I was just about to travel. Something said, wait. 
that something was you and God doing business in the secret place keeping your helpers waiting for you are we together the psalmist said I lay me down and I slept I waked for the Lord sustained me when you are going to bed you don't go to bed wondering if you wake up no God bless you see you tomorrow with confidence see you tomorrow not I don't know what will happen God bless you sleep well see you tomorrow what is the guarantee that I will enjoy my sleep oh um, I don't look for anybody's trouble no that is that is an ignorant believers talk the Bible says I lay me down and I slept I wait for the Lord sustain me then the Bible says it is vain to wake up early in the morning and to sleep late in the night is that true only to eat the bread of sorrow but the Bible says he giveth his beloved sleep you can use that scripture to attack sleeplessness that spirit that keeps me awake in depression the Lord rebuke you because it is written that he gives his beloved sleep it is the keeper of Israel who does not sleep nor slumber I am his Israel so I will sleep if I wake up it should be that I am diligently pursuing destiny not that it is lack of sleep anybody here going through that circle of tragedy in the name of Jesus and standing upon the authority of the word we declare you are set free right now <laughs> hallelujah we live in a world where evil continues to multiply and we know it is true because the Bible tells us that wickedness will increase it is true but you have to define the boundaries of your own immunity you must know this exceeding great and precious promises while you are sitting down right now how do you know that someone is not planning evil against you I don't look for trouble I'm not even famous go and read the book of Job they asked Satan where he was coming from. I said it to my people in Lagos this morning. He was coming to and fro the earth. You know how far the earth is from one place and yet the devil is that determined. So don't say he was in US. He still is, he can be back. <laughs> determined to destroy. And yet there was a statement, have you considered my servant Job? And Satan gave a fearful testimony. A man that is perfect and eschewed evil. Hear what Satan said. Does Job fear God for nothing? Verse 10. Here's what Satan said. Has thou not made a hedge about him? Who is testifying? Satan. You have made a hedge about him, number one. You have made a hedge about his house and about all that he has on every side. May God take us to this dimension. What? Ever, listen whatever job knew do you know how no wonder he was the wealthiest man in the east why won't you rise when you are covered your house is covered all that you have is covered Satan testifying I came there but I could not do anything listen this thing you see is a deep mystery that means when Satan comes to you and cannot get you the next place is your house if you cannot get your house the next thing is all that you have on every side your relationships your what this is the progressions of his attack I came to Job I saw him fortified then I went to his house the same thing on him was in his house then I went to his businesses his relationships and I gave up as Satan I am bringing you report God I could not do anything imagine a business like that imagine a ministry like that fortified by knowledge you thought that job went to build a fence around even jericho fell so it's not talking about something physical some of you are covered but your business is so exposed now jericho was shot dexterous building nothing came in nothing came out when your life becomes fortified like Jericho you see most of us live very risky lives we just hope that things will not harm us 
this is not administering fear this is showing you that the excellency of the god life made manifest to you is at the instance of the knowledge of this exceeding great and precious promises i truly believe that in my lifetime until my assignment is done no man born of a woman can take my life i truly believe this this is not blind confession i've seen the burning bush that's why i'm speaking The Bible says the path of the just is as a shining light. I will never have a worse year, a worse year before that will make me admire yesterday because of how destructive tomorrow is. No, my tomorrow is always an adventure that will outdo yesterday eternally for as long as I'm alive. Listen, carry this mentality, whether for ministry or business. Don't say last year, look how things were. It's your responsibility to change it. Compare what is happening to what is written. Match them together. That is the assignment of faith. This is what God said. This is what is happening in my life. Don't feel discouraged, but let that become your next assignment. You must force them. Force what is happening to be like what has been said. Hallelujah. The more you grow your health will deplete no 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 i will take responsibility by seeking advice from doctors but there is no devil that is going to use the factor of age to destroy your body my blood will flow with obedience from my head to my toe is that true yes, sir. believe just believe junk and cloud your spirit and allow the devil program all kinds of things so this is how i will die people died at 45 at 50 i sympathize with them but god has brought me as a voice of deliverance and that we have to you will hold your life like a tape and draw it till it gets to the last place you know how a tape is it may look small but you can draw it to the last how about prosperity I reject poverty in the name of Jesus Christ I reject it forever I reject it this is not I will always tell you that this is not some Pentecostal jamboree because you just want money for cars and houses no we are matured and disciplined believers but anyhow you look at it I still hate poverty Are we together? It incapacitates people, pushes you fastest to the corridors of compromise. There are many good people who can become beasts because of poverty. I have taught you that the only reason why Israel goes to Egypt is hunger. When there is hunger, hunger can take Israel to Egypt. Please reject it. Reject it in the name of Jesus Christ. It is not a measure of spirituality to not be able to take care of your children. It is not a measure of spirituality for your young children to be loitering around neighbors' homes. That's how they get introduced into all kinds of rubbish because of hunger. Don't say it is bringing glory to God. Reject it in the name of Jesus Christ. The blessing of the Lord is in my house. According to Psalm 112, blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. Listen, as at the time you are saying this, there may be nothing in your bank account, nothing in your pocket. Your assignment, it is what you are engaging that will make it happen. His seed shall be mighty upon earth, the Bible says. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Verse 3 says, wealth and riches shall be in his house. You know how you have a bulk room, you have the vault in the bank. That's where money stays. It's from there you take it and use it, but there is a place. And the Bible says your house will become the reservoir of the supplies of heaven. Then you can become a blessing. You can never help the poor by being one of them. No. Hallelujah. 
there are many people who have embraced that lifestyle of poverty as a sign of spirituality and they watch very simple things that the presence of financial resources can get done there are people depressed i'm not trying to demean but someone gets depressed because of hundred thousand ten thousand is that the will of god and his whole life just ends you wake up by two and you see someone roaming around you think god is speaking to them is worry 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 listen 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 please and if you don't understand the kingdom and you don't love god then you don't understand what i'm saying because what you think i'm saying is not what i'm saying at all i am not i am not massaging the, the ego of godlessness and a blind pursuit for material things that is not connected to kingdom when we teach wealth in this ministry and in this vision we always teach it with respect to the program of god because there are many people who don't love God. They have an obsession for money. They can kill for money. What you need is to come out when I make an altar call here. Not to receive an impartation for wealth. No. You need your spirit man. That regeneration first. Hallelujah. There are many people who are not born again. But when they hear teachings like this, especially when you begin to talk prosperity, they are happy because it appeals to the lost that is already eaten within them. No, that is not what we're advocating. We're kingdom people who know that the name of Jesus is so heavy and that it takes resources to lift it high for the nations to see. This is the standpoint that the blessing of God made all of you receive a warning from God. He suffered no man to do them wrong. He reproved kings for their sake, saying, Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. It will not happen because you found it in the Bible. It happens because you believe it and you are willing to engage it. But it then happens by knowledge. It's easy to quote it now when it is said in church. But can you be alone at home and still quote the same thing with confidence? He suffered no man to do them wrong. He reproved kings for their sake, saying, Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. 